Waterville Democrats. Yeah, very clever of you to have this the gathering at this time, because you're getting everybody. And, uh, we just came from uh, Belfast. Uh, help from uh, Seamus, who's handing out literature. Um, Seamus now has a famous name. Uh, it's the same name as uh, Mitt Romney's dog. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, it but, is. I mean, but, but my car, I mean, in his car, he was driving. <laughs> and I'm going to get to that trip in a moment. I just want to say, my name's John King. Uh, I am in the State House currently. I represent House District 118, which is part of the city of Portland. And uh, I have my hat in the ring for the U.S. Senate. Uh, with the, the drive today is relevant because. Uh, you know, we are facing some challenging times. Uh, the uh, America that I knew when I was younger, I'm 58, had different visions in the two major parties. But both parties brought something to the table. I mean, today I'm, I'm wearing a, a Muskie pin. Uh, we all know what Ed Muskie accomplished, but he did it working with uh, Howard Baker, Tennessee, Republican. They uh, jointly worked on the Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, the Safe Drinking Water Act, and a host of other uh, major pieces of legislation that we're very proud of. Today, that isn't happening. And uh, you know, my feeling <coughs> here among Democrats, although I'll say this with independence, it's a little hard with Republicans, although you find some who get it. One major party is missing in action. They are gone in ideology. How does it relate to my drive? We were on Route 107 and kept hitting one pothole after another. <laughs> There's something I would like you to know if you're not aware of it. Those potholes are increasingly the responsibilities of the Republican Party. And it's a little bit bizarre because Republicans like roads. Republicans like cars and trucks. Um, they have an ideology. They cannot allow government to do anything anymore. And it's a problem. Uh, it helps to spread the word. I know you got rid of the governor and sent him on to Augusta. <laughs> <laughs> he should be known as Governor Pothole because he, he capped the, uh, the, the gas tax. They stopped indexing it for inflation, so it's collecting less money as uh, inflation increases. And he won't bond for getting things done. Uh, I think that the Democrats share a vision of a state in which we work hard, we do take care of each other, we take care of the environment, we try and build schools that educate our kids, and uh, we grow jobs and move the state forward. You know, unfortunately, if your ideology <coughs> says government can't do anything, then uh, how are you going to be a partner in those enterprises? And uh, you might think that our senior senator is immune from it. Uh, what I would love to do is just talk about uh, the vision that I have. I, uh, suffice it to say that I think I share a vision with many of you here. Uh, uh, you know, I can characterize the last 10 years. Uh, this may not have been true with everyone here, but I'm quite, uh, quite sure that I would have voted against the Iraq War if I was in the Senate. I would have voted against the Bush tax cuts. I would have voted against Medicare Part D. Those th three things combined are a stunning part of our deficit. And the deficit is the reason why today we can't, government isn't able to do anything. And we're not investing in our future. We're not making it better for our kids. Although we will, you guys who are here. <laughs> um, and our senior senator has joined that. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to psychoanalyze her. It may be a function of the party that she's chosen to stay in. But when we had, well, first of all, the three votes I mentioned, she was on the wrong side of all of those. She said she's concerned about the deficit. They ballooned the deficit. That war was $800 billion. Uh, you know, that's not a small thing. We could fire someone for making a bad choice on that with nothing else. But in the last year, we had the American Jobs Act. 5,000 jobs would come to Maine. Fixing the roads, fixing the bridges, and, and working on schools, EMTs uh, would get support. Uh, no one disagreed with that estimate. There was 5,000 jobs. Olympia didn't disagree with it. She said she liked the jobs, but what she didn't want was the mechanism to pay for it. 
That doesn't make sense since she says she's not in favor of deficit spending. But the mechanism to pay for it was a small tax. Uh, for all of us, I don't really include myself in this company, but for all of us here who make more than a million dollars a year, <laughs> uh, you would have had to pay on the amount of money above your first million, but not below the first million. It's only above the first million. The top marginal tax rate was proposed to go up 3%, and she could not do that. 5,000 jobs. Um, yeah, it's getting a little late for Christmas references, but I uh, ran into a person who played, uh, who was a Santa Claus uh, this past Christmas in, uh, in Maine. And uh, he said he had the heartbreaking experience twice of having uh, kids on uh, visiting him and the, the child looking around to see if the parents were nearby and if they thought that they could get away with it, leaning in and saying to Santa, can you please give Dad a job? And uh, 5,000 jobs isn't enough to fix everything. But it might be five to 10,000 kids who wouldn't have had that kind of experience at Christmas. And uh, you know, this is the situation we're facing. And um, I, will, I will point out that we're getting demagogued at every turn. So everyone's heard of the uh, Keystone XL pipeline. Uh, Obama's getting hammered for that. It's, uh, it's a uh, dirty form of energy. Uh, the best climate expert said that if we were to take that uh, tar sands and exploit it, it would be game over for the planet. And, uh, and yet they're hammering Obama, even if that's, that uh, oil that came out of there might all be exported. And the other thing is jobs. The number of jobs for the XL pipeline is 7,000, spread over five states, none of them Maine. We're talking about 5,000 jobs in the American Jobs Act just in Maine. We also learned in uh, the Energy Utilities and Technology Committee the other day that the Efficiency Maine Trust, weatherizing people's houses and doing good work on efficiency, uh, has provided 5,000 jobs in the last three years. There's 10,000 jobs in those two, more than the XL pipeline, and yet we're listening to these people telling us that Obama is anti-jobs. He supported weatherizing homes in Maine. Our governor does not support it. The majority of this party doesn't support it. This is the kind of thing we have to take care of, and it goes all the way to the top. So uh, I haven't told you much about myself, but I know we carve these minutes out very, uh, uh, it's very difficult to do that. So I hope you, you would check out my bio. I think I bring a bit to the, the table. I was never intending to be standing here as a candidate for the US Senate, but I uh, have worked in the public interest uh, in challenging uh, situations, working for Greenpeace, I was a co-founder of Greenpeace USA. Uh, we achieved, among other things, a ban on dumping nuclear waste at sea, and uh, quite a few other things, which taught me at a fairly early age, my 20s, what it's like to go up against vested, powerful interests. And then I went to law school, and uh, I initially actually worked for a downtown large commercial law firm and, uh, and represented uh, big clients and did a decent job at that, but I wanted to quickly change and went to a plaintiff's class action firm and worked on the Exxon Valdez case uh, representing fishermen and here uh, on MTBE cases and on the tobacco case. So it's a kind of a law experience I have. Uh, I think that this could be useful, trying to get past the entrenched interests that have taken control of our government and have us, they're trying to convince us that corporations are people and uh, elections are auctions. Uh, we're really gonna have to work hard to turn it around, and if Maine is going to have an oar in the water and be part of it, uh, I'm afraid we have to, uh, we have to turn Olivia Snow out of office. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.